So let's talk about some MAGA chuds, uh, specifically some Christian nationalist MAGA chuds, because Josh Hawley is he, he's a jack of all trades, master of none. You know, he wants you to think that he cares deeply about masculinity. I think that he wrote a book about masculinity, you know, which is fine. Not really someone I, I think of when I think of masculinity. Um, you know, I'm getting low T vibes from him, to be uh, to be honest. Uh, you know, and I'm preaching to the choir. I don't think people <laughs> associate me with masculinity, but I'm self-aware, right? I'm not going to write a book on masculinity. Uh, but now he's he's going for the Christian nationalist LARP. Um, and he's basically saying, look, we need a we need a theocracy. Now I'm oversimplifying his words here, but you know, let's let's watch. You'll see for yourself. Religion divides this country. The left says it constantly. Have you heard it? All the time. They're like, oh, religion, it's so divisive. Religion divides America. I'm here to tell you today, religion doesn't divide America. Religion unites America. We are a religious people. I'll tell you what divides America. What divides America is, is when you use your religion to uh, suppress marginalized groups and impose your religiosity on all of us. That's what divides America, right? Is that what he's going to say? It's the left's attempt to destroy religion. That's what divides Oh, America. that's what it is. Okay, okay. That, ma that makes sense, right? Listen, I'm an anti-theist. I think that religion is inherently bad because, you know, it. there's been wars waged over religion, you know? Um, it gets you to suspend facts for faith, which I think is bad. Having said that, though, I have no problem with people practicing religion and being religious, and I would defend somebody's right to be religious and subscribe to a religion so long as they're not hurting anyone else. The problem is Christian nationalists want to impose their religion on all of us. But when we say no, they respond by saying, oh, you must want to destroy religion. Well, no. Uh... I don't want your religion being shoved down my fucking throat. It's okay to have a religion, but I don't need to be part of your religion. I don't want to be forced and compelled to subscribe to your religious dogma. That's where we draw the fucking line. But they're disingenuous, you know, and they refuse to admit that. And they'll say things like religious freedom, but they don't mean religious freedom because they would never support religious freedom for Muslims. Anyone who is uh, a Muslim in the United States, they accuse of wanting Sharia law. So they're not saying religious freedom for, you know, Mormons or Muslims or even certain kind of Christians. You know, Catholics, there's a divide there. Uh, they're saying we want religious freedom for us, for the evangelicals. Specifically, we want, we want the freedom, the freedom... To impose our religion on you. That's freedom to us. No, fuck you. You're not going to do that. I'm not going to allow you to do that. I don't want to be part of your religion. You can have your own religion. You can love your religion. I don't want to be part of your fucking religion. I'm not part of your little book club. So don't push that shit on me, okay? Go. What is dividing America is their attempt to erase our heritage, to relate, erase the foundation that this country has in, yes, the Bible. This is the greatest country. That's in the not true. Of the world. That's not true. That's just histor history revisionism. Like the founders, they were deists at most. You know, this wasn't a Christian country. Yes, it has a lot of Christians, majority Christians, but it's not a Christian country. Constitutionally, it is secular. And that's a fact that they pretend doesn't exist, but it's an inescapable fact. We're not a Christian country. We're a secular country. Our constitution is secular. Read the First Amendment, dummy. Because we are a country founded on the principles of the Bible. Wrong. That's the truth. And most Americans know it. They know it to be true. They know it to be true. Who's dividing America is the radical left. And that's why I say to you, we don't need less Christian influence in our society. We don't need less Christian witness in our society. We need more. In every I love how... This is a side point. You know, it's the radical left. They're the ones who's dividing America. What does the radical left stand for exactly? I think that I would be somebody who he would call a radical leftist. Uh, I want health care for every single person, free at the point of service. That includes Republicans. I don't think they should be spending hundreds of dollars every single month for health care. Uh, I think that every single person should be paid a living wage, more than a living wage, 
have guarantees as a worker, you know, pay time off, paternity, maternity leave. Uh, I think that everybody should be free to live their own lives. I believe in freedom fundamentally, freedom for trans people, freedom for non-binary people, LGBTQ plus people, but also freedom for people I disagree with so long as they're not hurting anybody. Religious freedom, I believe in freedom. But yet it's the left who's dividing everybody. Yeah, yeah. We're dividing everybody as you literally call for more religiosity as a politician. Fuck out of here. And to be clear, I don't even think he believes what he's saying. Like, this man is probably not even religious. He probably couldn't cite a single Bible verse. He's probably like Trump. I don't know, though. Um, but, you know, he's saying this because this is what the Republican Party's base wants to hear. And he's at the Faith and Freedom Conference, which, you know, he knows the crowd he's, uh, he's supposed to be speaking to. Part of government, in every part of society, you know what we ought to do? We ought to take the pride flag out of schools and put the Bible back in. You know what? You know what? We ought to, we ought to take the trans flag down from all of our federal buildings and over every federal building in America, write the words, in God we trust. In God we trust. Amen. Amen, brother. <laughs> You know, and God We Trust wasn't added to the Pledge of Allegiance until the 1950s. And I love how he's like, no, 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 we need the Bible in the schools. Hey, dipshit, why can't we have the Bible in schools precisely? Do you remember why? It's the First Amendment. I know that you know this, but you're pretending like you don't know that the First Amendment is a thing. But, you know, I, I don't care if you're ignorant or disingenuous, you're you're openly calling for the Constitution to be violated. Bringing the Bibles in schools would be a violation of the First Amendment. I mean, how do you think that he would react if, you know, we brought the Torah in schools? Or the Quran? What if we brought other religious texts in schools, right? Scientology even, hell. You're going to allow one, you know, why not the others? He wouldn't like that, right? Because, again, this isn't about religious liberty. It's about Christian nationalism and imposing their theocratic views on all of us. And more and more, this is what they want. You know, this is kind of a microcosm of a bigger problem right now where Republicans are getting emboldened because of the far-right Supreme Court and they think they can get away with anything. Uh, so... You all probably heard about this, but, you know, Louisiana wants the Ten Commandments in public schools. Will the Supreme Court let it? Probably. <laughs> I mean, honestly, at this point, I don't know. You have so many um, far-right radicals on the Supreme Court, Christians like uh, Amy Coney Barrett, Alito, uh, Clarence Thomas. So it's not a matter of like, oh, will the Constitution permit it or not? I think that's irrelevant largely when it comes to these Supreme Court justices. Like, that might sound cynical, but they're very clearly not relying on the Constitution or even precedent to, you know, come to these conclusions. So, you know, will they allow it? I don't know, probably. I mean, it's it's a bunch of crazy fascists, Christian nationalist evangelicals in robes. Like, they're not deities. They're not like, they don't have some sort of untapped wisdom that none of us are privy to. Like, they're just regular-ass people who are kind of crazy, or not kind of crazy. They're pretty fucking crazy, right? Especially Alito. I think he's probably the crazy. Well, it's a tie between him and Clarence Thomas. But, I mean, we're dealing with crazy fucking people here. Let's read a little bit from the story. So, last week, Louisiana en enacted legislation requiring every public school in the state to display a specific version of the Ten Commandments in each classroom. I can't wait to be sued, Republican Governor Jeff Landry proclaimed a few days before signing the new law, erasing any doubt that the purpose of this legislation is to coax the Supreme Court into legalizing religious displays in government-run classrooms. Yeah, yeah. So that's what this is about. They're, he's doing it now because, obviously, now's the time. You know, you've got the fascist Supreme Court that you wanted, um, who are willing to bring about fascism and impose it on all of us. So, you know, they're they're daring the ACLU and civil rights and civil liberties organizations to sue them because if they appeal all the way to the Supreme Court, 
they get a pretty good chance of uh, seeing a dub. So that's that's the problem. We're in this predicament where we're seeing a Lochner type era, right? For those who don't know, the Lochner era, they were a, another rogue court during the uh, the New Deal era, and they were just striking down New Deal after New Deal reforms that were being passed. And it wasn't until FDR threatened to pack the court that they stopped. Now, that was part of it, but also the makeup of the court changed as well, just to be honest. Um, but the problem here is that the makeup of this court isn't going to change anytime soon, unless it's for the worse, because I can't really anticipate, you know, um, well, I don't know. If Biden wins another four years, Clarence Thomas is old, so he could die. Um, but then that's still, you know, 5-4 majority. So it's... It's hard to imagine things changing that quickly. Like, I'd be surprised if the makeup of the court changed in our lifetime because conservatives know you've got to protect that fucking court because that court is key to fulfilling their fascist fantasy. So, you know, I don't know. But the question here, will they get away with it or will he get away with it? The answer is unclear. Pro probably, though, right? And the court's uh, current First Amendment precedents cut strongly against Louisiana's law, but the court's GOP-appointed majority has also spent the last several years rolling back precedents separating church and state. That's the problem, right? I hope they're going to get to it. Like, there was the uh, the case involving the coach who wanted to do prayers at games. That's A-OK. -okay. You can do that <laughs> because, you know, no more separation of church and state anymore, you know? So there's a very real risk that they will allow public schools to promote Christianity, and it's not just about, like, the Ten Commandments in school classrooms. What comes after that? I mean, what else will they allow? You know, um, you start with this is what they allow in classrooms. And, then, oh, well, this is what they mandate in classrooms. Like, this is genuinely dangerous because it actually does put us on a pathway to theocracy. Um, and that's, like, that's what the people on this court believe in. So that's what's really that's what's really terrifying. Uh, the court has historically held that the public schools have an unusually high obligation not to promote religious viewpoints in large part because the young people educated in those schools are unusually vulnerable to coercion. Allowing this law to stand would mean taking a sledgehammer to the wall separating church and state. Exactly. And look, what do we call this? Young people are unusually vulnerable to coercion. It's there's a word for it. Hmm in smoctrination what's the word that republicans always use oh right indoctrination so they say that lgbtq people want to indoctrinate young people when really that's that's projection you know uh, they're the ones who want to indoctrinate people like everywhere there's glow mama. you see them all the time i mean it's constant mama. my children are about mama glow 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 i turn on mama. tv there's glow in the background every tv show news media glow, why glow 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 they're everywhere glow 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 glow